Welcome to Tales from SYO Ranch, the bit shoot channel where everyone is entitled to my opinion, and I'm Bill Stone. In my most recent video, The Algorithm is Watching You, and there's a link to that below, I explained how algorithms as massively complex as Google's tend to take on, for lack of a better term, a personality that makes decisions the way that developers make their own decisions. And I didn't spend as long on that as I might have. See, a programmer always makes choices in programming, and we all do, with a belief system that guides their actions. And again, this is something we all do. I like to think of it as the way that we think. And all of us humans do it. We each, make, each have a belief system about that will guide how we make our choices based on what that belief system says. It's very hard to describe what I mean by the way that we think. And no doubt philosophers have a term for this that's better. And if you know it, please feel free to leave it in the comments. I don't mean the mechanics of how you think or how your brain works. I mean the way that you think when you make a decision. Now, I can only use myself here as an example. As a small L libertarian, I am guided by the zero aggression principle in making my choices. And I have a link to the video I did about the zero aggression principle. You can learn more what I think about it there. And when I make a choice, the question, does this initiate force? is always somewhere in the back of my mind. It's not really there consciously, but it's there at some level, and it guides the way I make my decisions. That's the way I think about things. Now, substitute me for, say, a fairly devout Christian and put their belief system in place of mine. And the way that they think about things will guide their decisions in a way that might be totally different from my own or yours, for that matter. The way that you think about things and decisions will guide your decision making, even if it's just at a subconscious or unconscious level. So the way that they think, since you're dealing with a large group of very left programmers, the way that they think and how they solve comp complex problems, such as dealing with algorithms and how these various choices are made within the algorithm, the way that they think and the way that they come in their own minds to making a decision of some kind, that seeps into the algorithm itself. And you wouldn't think this would be a big deal, but it is the way that we think that causes algorithms to take on, for lack of a better term, a personality. Now, on June 24th, 2019, Project Veritas uh, released some information, including a video, and there's a link to that in my description box below, that strongly suggests that Google is explicitly biased against whatever ideas run afoul of their definition of fairness. Now, personally, I'd like to know their definition of fairness because I'm reasonably sure it wouldn't match mine and probably not yours either. And that's because fairness is not an absolute. It is totally personal. It is totally subjective. It has no real agreement on what a definition of that word means. So within a few hours of uploading it, the video was deleted by YouTube. Fortunately, Project Veritas has a BitChute account, and the video remains there, and there's a link again to that below. I suggest you please support BitChute. It is my primary platform, and it tends to give me more views and engagement than Bit YouTube. And BitChute's principles do not care a load of fetid dingo's kidneys when I upload. As the support page says, we are a small team making a stand against internet censorship because we believe it is the right thing to do. Now, as a technical thing, I need to talk to James O'Keefe here directly. Your masking of the voice of the anonymous Google whistleblower was fantastically easy to correct. And I mean fantastically. As in, I loaded this video audio into Audacity, which is a great program for manipulating audio. It's free. And with a single pass by the pitch changer at the value of 25%, it corrected the audio. Now, I'm not doing anything that's unusual for geeks. Today, everyone at Google did what I did, including this guy's co-workers and bosses. And some of them are going to figure out who he is. You fracked up, James. Your source has been burned by your own incompetence. Also today, U.S. Senator Ted Cruz questioned Maggie Stanfill, director of Google User Experience, during a U.S. Senate Committee on Science, Commerce, and Transportation hearing. And he specifically brought up the things that were in uh, Project Veritas's video and other information that were released. 
Now, while I was impressed with the fact that Ted Cruz had some level of IT comprehension that one rarely sees in a government official, particularly given that he was grandstanding. Pardon me, I record these in one take for various technical reasons, and my seat is old and starting to slide down. But Ted Cruz was grandstanding. To begin with, the whole damn thing was political theater. They held it in one of their big, important-looking hearing rooms with lots of great lighting for the camera, and I'm pretty sure that the senators were wearing, wearing makeup for the audience at home. In fact, if you contrast the color of Ted Cruz's face with his ears, you can actually see it. Secondly, Maggie Stanfill knows only things about her own department and little else. She's not that high on the org chart. There's absolutely no way that she can know who her superiors or people above her on the org chart voted for because you don't discuss politics with your boss. Now, Ted Cruz knew all this, and he knew exactly the answers that Stan, uh, Stanfield would give because they were truthful answers. They were, I don't know, which is the truthful answer. How I would have given the exact same answers, and Ted Cruz knows it. Therefore, to even bother with the questioning was just grandstanding. Now, I did watch the full video, um, largely because that's Cruz's uh, questioning Stanfield, because I largely wanted to read Stanfield's body language. Now, I'm no expert at this. If you want to learn how to read body language, I suggest Bombard's Body Language, and there is a link to that below. Now, I attempt, I attempt to apply Bombard's methods, admittedly, probably poorly. But my reading of Stan uh, Phil was, and if you, you know, if you know body language better than I, please watch it for yourself and tell me in comments where I was wrong. But she, I think she was stressed, um, but this is normal under the circumstances. You're up there in front of a you know, big friggin' theater and you've got senators, U.S. senators questioning you. Of course you're going to be stressed and you really shouldn't read that much into it. She liked some questions better than others. She generally liked the ones that called on her to talk about other people because I don't know is always the truthful and legal answer to the question about what were other people doing. I don't know. You'd have to ask them. There was um, a lot of the believe me look with Stanhill's eyes very wide and a brow very, very upwards. And she's saying, believe me, believe me. This is usually a tell. It is, in other words, a body language cue that somebody isn't being that truthful or they have to think to come up with the answer. So on the whole, I thought she was stressed, but that's normal for the circumstances. And she was giving tells of not being truthful very, very liberally. <laughs> To be honest, I'm only marginally interested in this whole thing because as an IT wonk, I've been reading regularly Slashdot, and that is Slashdot, S-L-A-S-H-D-O-T dot org, Slashdot dot org. Do not put the www in front of it, that will fail. Just use Slashdot, S-L-A-S-H-D-O-T dot period O-R-G. Slashdot is the best above, above anything else for technical news. I have it on my RSS feed, and I see its article very frequently. So I'm left with a simple statement. Tell me something I didn't already know. The technical press has been screaming about this issue and many others in extreme technical detail for years. Trust me, in this instance, unless you, like me, have been reading Slashdot, you have only the barest understandings of the technical issues that my colleagues have either released from inside or deduced from how Google works on the outside. It's actually far worse than you think. So thank you Project Veritas, specifically James O'Keefe, and even Senator Ted Cruz grudgingly for joining the fracking conversation after all these years. And that is all that I have to say about that. So thanks for watching. I'd love to keep the conversation going, so please leave your comments, questions, and nasty remarks in my comments section, and I'll do my best to respond to you. If you like what I'm doing, please like this video, subscribe to my channel on BitChute. That is www.bitchute.com slash syl-ranch. That would be b-i-t-c-h-u-t-e dot com, period, com. 
slash SYL Ranch. While you're there, hit the notification bell, share me on social media, and tell all of your friends, family, neighbors, pets, and livestock to do the same. I would certainly appreciate your support, either via my PayPal, my Subscribestar, or a place on my website where you can support me further. And there are links to all of these in my description box below. So, thanks for watching. We, this is all the time that we have today for this hot episode of the highly acclaimed, world-renowned Tales from SYL Ranch, a bit shoot channel where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm Bill Stone. Ultimate power in this world has always been one simple thing, the control and manipulation of minds.